Welcome back to the channel, welcome back to the vlog and welcome back to another episode in my series of Behind the Raw where I take you with me into Lightroom Classic and I talk you through my thoughts, my workflow on an image and any mistakes that I would have made so you don't have to. Now this week it's the turn of a visit that I did to the Copper Coast and I had my uh, start of my season for my workshops and my first one was kicking off. I went down the evening before just to scout out the area and I saw some great conditions that I decided to do something which was go for ultra long exposures. So my exposure times would be two minutes on average. And one of the things that I learned, number one, first and foremost, was that my sensor got extremely bad. It got, I must have had some spray hit it when I was down in Dingle for my wild waves. And when I got back and looked at the back of the camera, I was thinking, oh my goodness, the amount of sensor spots that I would have had. I'll show you the amount of sensor spots that I would have had when I show you the raw file here and then the work that I did to clean them up. Thankfully, I've since now cleaned my sensor, so I don't have that issue to be able to deal with. But yeah, keep an eye on that because if you don't, it could end up ruining the image. And I'll talk you through a couple of examples of how it almost ruined the image that I'm going to edit here today. So yeah, that's what we're going to do today. Let's go. Okay, so here we are now in the raw file and the first thing I want to bring your attention to is like I said, look at the amount of sensor spots that I have here. Now, if I zoom in and give you a look at these here, it is going to scare you. Look here all up in the sky and all now as well down below some darker than others and that was a problem which i didn't realize i had until i was on location so good lesson learned you know check before uh, you go out another shoot but i mean look from my point of view it's relatively easy enough to remove now i want to show you my normal trick before i do anything here is to go into your basic panel and then scroll down to your dehaze and if you click on dehaze you see how all these now become even more visible here in the sky if i bring that back here you notice you know you don't see the ones that are up here you just see the bigger ones but now if you go into dehaze you can see the extra ones that are here so very simple process really you know with the advent of the new technology now within Lightroom so just make your brush smaller bigger than what it needs to be click on it and hold it in the center and what that will do is it will find corresponding 99.99% of the time it does fix it so what I'm going to do here right from the outset is possibly fast forward uh, through this while I find all of them and then I'll talk you through what lesson that I learned but moreover uh, I got away with something very lucky so yeah I'll fast forward after I get all these done now okay so as you can see on the screen here the amount of these stamps are all of the <laughs> Uh, sensor spots that I would have had well it was actually spray that had come from big waves that I was photographing when I was in Dingle but the thing I got away with here is if one of these was at the very edge of one of these stacks then it would have ruined my potential opportunity to be able to have a clean image so it's important that you know you check that before you go out but like I say on this occasion I got quite lucky now if I reset my dehaze and take that back off now I have a much cleaner image. So my first and foremost thoughts on this image was that I wanted to create something which was ultra long and I wanted to smooth out all of this water. So this is 121 seconds at F11 and I dropped my ISO to 50. I had my polarizer on and I also had my 10 stop equivalent on as well. Now, what that does is it completely smooths, makes this all like glass and makes more of a minimalist approach. Now, I had really focused on these two here and also there's a bird who is on top of this other stack which you can make out here and you can see for almost two minutes his movements were very, very, very little. So he stayed there for the whole time, or she, I don't know. But um, that's the important thing then, the lesson then from that is just make sure you get that right. So I'll follow my usual uh, editing process to a certain extent with this. So I'm going to um, make sure my horizon is straight. So I'm slightly off here. So I'm using the grid lines to make sure I can balance it out. And I want to make sure I'm even across the board. And now that is 0 0.35 of an adjustment. Now, now, with that in mind then as well if I look and what I generally do on these is I'll show you what auto can do because it has gotten quite powerful I'm going to give you a look at auto right now and what that does is not much to the image because I had exposed the image as right as I could make it so if I give you a look at the um, before oops sorry 
select my image again. So if I give you a look at the before and the after, you can see effectively all it's done there is it's brought down the blacks and not much changed on the histogram. So I'm going to um, not take the auto settings. So I'm going to bring it back to where I had wanted it. Okay, so it's back at the originals now and I'm going to talk you through the editing process that I want to create. Firstly, I don't like the top of the sky here and if I look at the bottom, I had some seaweeds that are there as well that ruin the kind of cleanness of the image. So I'm going to go for a 16-9 crop on this. So if I go 16-9 crop and now I can remove the top part of has no value and then I also have the bottom here. Now if I wanted to kind of put this directly in the center of the image as you can see here I am introducing these back in again so I can look I can use it look at it like that I can always fix those afterwards as well so for right right now I think that's more aesthetically pleasing. Now the editing of this is going to be pretty straightforward so if I take my highlights here and looking my histogram you know there's nothing dark there's nothing blown so I've exposed that right but if I take my highlights and bring them down you'll start to see the texture coming out in the sky. If I also take my whites and bring those down you see more detail coming out in the sky again and there's a subtle color in that sky also because it was just just approaching golden hour so I was just getting a bit of golden light in the sky but I said okay I didn't uh, wait around to see if I was going to get the golden golden light when it hit into sunset so we have that bit of color and that will come up more and I'll do something separate with that in a moment so we can look at the shadows and the um, uh, next if I bring those up here you see the detail coming out if I go all the way up here you can see all this detail coming through but for me it just looks far too much HDR it doesn't need that much but I mean it still needs a fair old amount here so I'm going to bring it up by this much here and then blacks there's nothing underexposed so if I bring those back down I can crunch them or I can bring them up but it makes it too you lose that texture in the image so I'm going to leave the blacks as is texture I do want to add a small bit of texture onto this because it's just adding texture into the stacks themselves and now if I bring in a small bit of dehaze look what it now does it starts to bring out some of those details in the sky as well also vibrance the only things really to affect on the color is the stacks because if I bring my vibrance up what it's going to do is going to bring up the color in the sky it's also going to bring up the blues in the water so I think probably around about maybe 17 is what I'll do from there now from the next point of view if I go in and I select sky so that's going to make a selection of the sky but have you seen in these episodes before it doesn't necessarily always get it right you get a bit of overlap onto your subject so I'm going to go here click on these three dots and I'm going to say intersect mask with sky and what that will do is it refine it and then it takes away that shading or that ghosting that we had on the stacks and now I can affect the sky here only the sky so if you see here nothing else is being um, affected here on that so all I want to do on this again here is I want to bring my highlights slightly up and I want to bring my shadows slightly down and then I'm going to add a tiny bit of contrast and now I'm going to bring it up and that's going to make it brighter and more balanced as well that's matching on the bottom part of the image. Now um, a couple of things then that you can do here and if I really want to kind of go for the minimalist side of things you can go in the same tools I would have had earlier on but I'm now going to move it on to heal and if I now select it's important that you create more around where you're looking for you don't exactly do it closely because then you can have artifacts remaining so now I'm going over here on the horizon and now if you look here it's taken from this side and it's pretty pretty good match one small area left here so all I gotta do is just come up from here and now that is gone the other one that I don't like over here is this one on this side so uh, this might be a bit tricky because it's trying to fill on the horizon but again we'll go bigger than what we need and then we will click on this and see where it takes it from more or less gone except for the small artifact here so I'm going to do a line up and now it is gone. Now there is an error here. I can see that the horizon is slightly off. I could fine tune that and play around with that as well to get it exactly right. So to do that, you just click on the selection that you would have had. Um, so if I come back in here and you highlight this uh, selection, you'll see this is this one. So I can move that around. So I can say, okay, I want to move that down here or where is it getting its copy from? Or if I click on this one, I can say, okay, it's getting its copy from over here. And now I can move that slightly up or down. So I can change this and just line up my horizon to make sure that I get it spot on and that there is no overlap. That's perfectly fine. And now all I got to do here with this one is move this back up 
and that's going to cover that area as well. So now if I take a look finally at the overall image here, I do like what I've achieved on this image. It is a minimalist view. You know, I could come down here into effects as well and I can put in a slight vignette uh, to be able to make the focus in the center. And then histogram finally coming back to that and saying, okay, can I increase the exposure more? Yes, I can. So I bring up the exposure overall on everything, bearing in mind, don't forget that I've got the sky done as well separately. And now what you see is a very simple and clean image. Now I'm looking at this here, I probably need to go back and fix that over there, but I can do that in my own time. Now on finally on detail, as always, I'll come in and I'll ask it to run the denoise, even though there isn't much noise on this image because I shot it at 50 and it was a long exposure. When you are doing long exposures, it's important just to take the opportunity to see if there is any and can you remove it. So again, looking at this, there is no noise. If I come over here, oh, there, oh it's looking at the sensor spots that were there originally. I'm just wondering why. Um, but if you come over here and you look at this next guy, there is where the seagull, as I said earlier on, sitting up in the top, there is no noise. But at the same point, I'm still going to enhance it. So thank you very much as always for joining this episode. I hope you enjoyed my um, workflow and importantly clean your sensor. You don't want to have the same challenges that I had as far as sensor spots goes. So thanks as always. I hope you can join me for my next episode next uh, Sunday. If it's your first time on the channel please hit subscribe button, give me a like, give me a comment and until the next time, Schlange Fall.